Hello guys and welcome back. If you are new around here, I do mostly Australian true crime cases. Except today, I am doing something a teeny tiny bit different. This isn't a replacement video for a case. This is just a video I'm going to pop in between my case videos to lighten up the mood a little bit to have a bit of a conversation with you guys. I did a poll on my channel to see how many of you wanted to see this. 60% of you didn't and that's okay for the 40% of you that would like to see a true crime Q&A. Hello, welcome. Let's get into it. Okay, so I'm just going to be scrolling through the questions in no particular order. I feel really awkward doing a Q&A style video even though I'm talking about true crime still because I'm sort of not reading off notes but anyway Erin asks how do you research for cases and how you take a break from this emotionally draining subject matter okay so how I research for cases is I mean, the internet, <laughs> obviously. I have read books as well, like in the Anita Cobby video, I read that book beforehand, although that was on my old channel. I bring up, I start a, you know, blank page of notes and I start reading through to get a general idea of the case. I basically will write down the rough facts of it from beginning to end and then I'll start to bulk it out, if that makes sense. And I do treat it like a story per se with the beginning middle and end and I will set out like sections uh, so I'll generally start my videos out with an about the victim or with an about me section about them and then I'll get into the story I will almost always do it in a chronological order if I can and I basically keep going through articles things like reddit even though I don't take anything that reddit says too seriously but they can point you in good directions documentaries are a huge one i'm much more of a listener than a reader podcast podcasts are amazing just going through everything i can find on a case piecing it together in the format that i would like to hear a story and like to tell a story and then i write it up I go through and edit it a few times so I mean even though these are notes I script it in the sense that it's written in the order that I want to tell you the story. Wow so it's going to be a long video if I give answers this long uh, and the, the way I deal with the emotion of it personally and I've had people mention that why aren't you emotional, why aren't you sad? This is when I research these cases, I am emotional. I cry almost every case I research. I am sad, but by the time I've researched cases, by the time I come to film the video, I have that all out my system. I've heard all the facts of the case like a hundred times before I film it. So by the time I'm telling you the story again, Nine times out of ten, I'm not going to be emotional while filming a video. So that's how I deal with it. I, I cry in my own time. <laughs> so Ebony asks, are there any cases that I won't cover on my channel? Also, which unsolved case do you wish you had all the answers to? Uh, I'll answer the second one first. Uh, I really want the Julie Cutler case solved. I'm sure if you haven't seen the video, almost none of you would be familiar familiar with it. I'll link Julie's video down below. It's a girl that went missing in the late 80s in here in Perth, Australia. Never been found. I really, really, really want that solved. I want all of these solved, but that's always one I come back to and I'm looking up on Google every now and then and seeing if anything's changed and... It hasn't. <laughs> there was an, uh, a dig a mid last year, but nothing really came of it. Are there any cases I won't cover? I won't cover any... I do like to stick to Australian cases. Not to say I wouldn't cover a case from another country. I definitely want to start doing some New Zealand cases because, you know, we're like neighbours basically. Um, I don't when I started this channel, I thought that I would eventually cover cases like Madeline McCann, but now, no way. Not to say she doesn't deserve 
to be talked about as much as anyone else, but like everyone has talked about her and all the big, I guess, really American cases that everyone has talked about. I don't see the point of giving, ugh, sounds horrible. If people already have enough coverage, if everyone already knows about that case, it's time to talk about a lesser known case. So I personally won't cover any of the cases that I have seen covered by every podcast, every crime YouTuber, every documentary. What, what Everyone already knows these stories. They need to hear some new ones. And the only other individual case I won't cover, and it's not Australian anyway, and the only reason is that the details of this case make me sick to my stomach that I don't think I could sit down and spend time researching for this case is the Junko Furuta case. I'll pop a photo up of, of, of Junko. If you don't know it, uh, Eleanor Neal covered it. If you do want to see that covered by someone else, she did a really good job, but the details of that are just horrendous. Okay, so Heather asks, Pick one case that is, in your opinion, could be a police cover-up or have police involved. The Sharon Mason case, I covered it not that long ago. The facts of that case and the fact that the person that went to jail for it, don't know if they did it or they didn't. They actually recently passed, so I'm not speaking ill of the dead. But uh, just, it's some weird shit going on there. I just, just watched the video, the facts of that case do not make sense. It's like police were looking for someone to blame, basically. And they didn't have anyone except this one person who had a criminal past. So they picked him and they blamed him and he went to jail for it. But so much points to the fact he didn't do it. That's the only person police kind of have. So I think they're just like, well, you know, we've got someone, probably not the right guy, but someone. So Erin asks, if there was one case you could magically find out everything that happened, who was guilty, why they did it, etc., what case would it be? So I kind of already answered that. A couple of years ago, that would have been the Claremont serial killer, like a thousand percent, like a thousand percent, but now probably Julie Carla. So that MK2 Golf asks, <laughs> um, oh no, she says her name, sorry. So Tamara asks, I have a question. How do you pick what cases you want to research and make a video on? I have had a long list of Australian cases I've wanted to personally see covered on YouTube for a long time and no one has. So I guess I just keep building on that list. Oh, I don't know how I pick them. I guess Honestly, I sort of look back to my list week by week and I'm like, I feel like picking that one today to cover. There is, there's no rhyme or reason to the ones I pick, honestly. I do try not to do too many really well-known cases in Australia in a row. And if I see a case that is being really highly requested, I will prob probably do that one next. That's pretty much the only method I have at choosing the cases I cover. So Mabel asks, if there was one case you could be a fly on the wall to, which one would it be and why? And how has covering and researching true crime cases affected you? And uh, what do you think the punishment should be for people who commit these disgusting crimes? So for the first one, uh, the fly on the wall, Claremont serial killer, 100%. I would love to sit in on, on Edwards being questioned. Anything to do with that case, I would... I want to know every single detail of the Claremont case. And I think everyone in WA, in Western Australia, would love to be a fly on the wall during... This time period, the pre-trial that just has been happening and the trial coming up in July. Oh my gosh. Uh, it's it's going to be interesting. How has covering and researching true crime affected me? I would say it's just made me, honestly, a more vigilant person. I do things like I check the back seat of my car. You know, I'm very aware of my surroundings. I always have been, but I think you pick up little tips and tricks, maybe that's not the right word. You're more safety conscious. And that's the, that's the effect it's had on me. I've always been a paranoid person anyway, so I don't think it's really made me, in fact, it really hasn't, I don't think made me more paranoid because I was always like that, but it's more, I guess I'm someone that would like to know what could happen as opposed to being ignorant to it. And so, by researching these sort of cases and watching them and etc etc it sort of tells me worst case scenario what's out there 
and it makes me feel feel a little more comfortable sounds really weird but <laughs> last question from Mabel for a punishment people who commit disgusting crimes for the worst of the worst well if if you saw in my Anita Cobby video at the end towards the end of the video I talk about what had happened to one of the men involved in uh, Anita's murder what one of the other inmates did to him they basically this is a little graphic but hey you're on a crime channel expect graphicness um basically they put a tube up his behind and that tube had some barbed wire in it um uh, went up up the other end and they pulled the tubing out and left the barbed wire in there and he couldn't sit down for a long time and kind of made me smile so i think that would be really appropriate punishment for quite a few people I just so Valera asks, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, do you have a personal case that affects you and what case really saddens you? The case that has affected me more than any is Anita Cobby, 100%. There is a great documentary on that on YouTube by Channel 7 here in Australia. I, if you go watch it if you haven't, it, I was bawling like a baby. It was, it's just, oh, it's just the case that's affected me the most. No particular reason besides, I mean, all these cases are horrific, but it's that one is just awful. And I guess the one that has saddened me the most is Ebony Simpson. Again, if you're not familiar with that, I covered it on my old channel. It's just an incredibly sad case and incredibly heartbreaking. I don't know why some cases, you know, affect me or others more than other cases affect us, but... They're just the two cases that always stick in my head. So Brandon has a few questions. Thank you, Brandon. I'll quickly go through them. So the first question he asks was, how long have you been interested in true crime and what sparked your interest in it? Um, I would say like growing up, I was quite like fearful of being murdered, which sounds really weird, but no one wants to be murdered. I didn't like watch any crime documentaries or shows or anything like that but what I was really interested in was what was happening locally to me any anything happening in Perth or WA anything happening in Australia I'd always followed the Claremont case I liked watching crime through the news basically as opposed to movies documentaries so basically I would say that probably local crimes sparked my interest like the Claremont case uh next question out of all the cases you've covered so far which is which has been the most difficult to film and that would be my Jessie Kate video what are some of the cases that you haven't covered in a video yet but would like to in the future my god there's a list and a half let me let me look at my computer ah uh, gosh just to name a few to you guys, Body in the Barrels, Peter Falconio, Lily, Virginia Morse, Samantha Knight, Daniel Morecambe, Port Arthur, Hoddle Street, Jane Furlong, the uh, Sydney Siege, the Link Cafe Sydney Siege that is, William Tyrell, the Wonder Beach Murders. There is like a long, 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 long list there, my friend. What's your process for researching a case and then making a video about it? How long does it take? Uh, I did kind of answer that, but it takes anywhere from a, like a week to a month, depending. Uh, most of my cases take one to two weeks, but the longer ones, I can be like going at them for like, you know, a month. I think my um, Sean Kingy video took me a, at least a month to put together. Uh, and what are your future goals for my channel? I'm just gonna keep plodding along as we are now making videos on Australian cases that's it really I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing as long as you guys are here and watching and liking what I'm doing so Chloe asks so if I'd ever go to school for crime and if so what would you study I would not <laughs> I'm not I don't like uh, science I'm not good at science more to the point so I couldn't study anything like this or no. Mm -mm. What made it motivated you to start a channel and how did your channel, how did your YouTube channel first gain traction? Um, what motivated me to start was seeing quite a few crime channels pop up, but no one talking about Australian cases. So I thought I'm going to give it a go. And here we are. 
Uh, what gained traction? I don't know, but my Carly Ryan video did quite well quite fast and a lot of you came in from there. So hi, if you came from that video. Thank you. Ali asks, my question is if you could instantly be a serial killer profiler, would you and why? Uh, no, I wouldn't because I don't think I would be the best person for that job. Um, I guess you'd have to study like something to, with, to do with psychology. I can't imagine me being the best person to do that. <laughs> Grace asks, what was the case? The one case that got me into true crime, Claremont serial killer. Emma asks, do you think the negativity of surrounding yourself with true crime affects your mental health or will it affect it in the future? At the moment, yeah, I, mm, it doesn't affect my mental health, but it can be a bit sad <laughs> to be sitting and researching these cases week in and week out, I guess, which is exactly why I wanted to do this video because I needed a mental break from it. So if you're here and watching, thank you. Um, in the future, who who knows? Uh, I'm gonna go because I have been talking for far too long and I am just, I'm rambling now. So I will see you guys next time. As always, stay vigilant, stay safe, and we will speak soon.